In order to mod motivate the concept of sampling rate conversion, let's look at what does first it means. So what it means is that we are changing the sampling rate of an already sampled signal using discrete operations is called sampling rate conversion. And this conversion could be that you are either increasing the sampling rate or decreasing the sampling rate. So a question that comes up is, why would you want to do sampling rate conversion? Now, that could be for various reasons, but let's look at the example of the case that we are sampling a song at sampling frequency of 44.1 kilohertz CD quality, which means my sampling time is 44, 1 over 44, 100. So how we did that, we got x of t, we had a continuous to discrete block, I used sampling time t1, and I got xn equal to xn of t1. Now this song, maybe it was four or five minutes long, we sampled it at 44,100 samples per second, let's say it used 16 bits per sample, it took certain amount of space in whatever device I was storing it in, let's say it was in a smartphone. Now I want to transfer it to another smartphone which has half the space available to store this song. Well, if it has half the space available, actually what I should have done is instead of sampling it at 44.1 kilohertz, I should have sampled it at uh, one half the original sampling rate. So if we had sampled the song at sampling frequency FS2 equal to 22.05 kilohertz, then that song would have taken half the amount of space that it is currently taking. So let's say that that is our goal. Now, if we want to reduce the sampling frequency of this song, in this problem, I want to do that because I want to have half the space. I can take two approaches. Approach one, which actually we do not want to do, is the following. I get x of n that I had originally sampled. Then I actually use that to construct a continuous time signal x hat of t. And the hope is that this x hat of t is very close to x of t. And then I resample it in, the in using analog hardware using the new sampling frequency t2, which is 1 over fs2 to get x tilde of n, which is x hat of n t2, and the hope is that that, if the reconstruction was perfect, that is approximately equal to x of n t2. So one approach of doing this sampling rate conversion is basically this. I start with the original sequence I do reconstruction x hat t, and I do then resampling in analog hardware. Now this approach, as you can see, is not very good. For example, if you are using your phone, you are saying, let's first play the song, I will record it again, and then I will redo the sampling rate. You don't want to do that. So what the right approach is, that actually we start with a sequence xn 
and then we do some discrete operations so that we stay in our digital system. What are those discrete operations? That will be discussed later. So we perform some discrete operations to get x tilde of n which is the same as if I had got an x hat of nt or approximately x of nt2. So what should go into this block? What goes into this block is the ratio t2 over t1 which in this case is 2. So sampling rate conversion is this process that instead of focusing on this approach 1 which is not a good approach we actually do some discrete operations to obtain the same thing that we ha would have obtained using approach 1. This particular type of sampling rate conversion is called downsampling or decimation and since t2 over t1 is 2 we call it by a factor of 2. We are doing a decimation by a factor of 2. Now one thing that you should notice here is that there is a possibility if I go to approach 1 there is a possibility of aliasing. If my new sampling rate is much smaller than the bandwidth of my original signal that I sampled. Right? So assume my original song had a bandwidth of 20 kilohertz. When I sampled it with 44.1 kilohertz, I had no aliasing. I reconstructed this signal. But now if I am sampling it again, at a sampling frequency of 22.05 kHz, then I'm not satisfying the Nyquist criterion and I will have some aliasing. So since op approach 2 is mimicking approach 1, that means that there is a possibility of aliasing here. And we'll discuss this as to how you can avoid that and that is by putting, of course, a low pass filter, but in this approach 2, the low pass filter will be put in the discrete domain instead of an anti-aliasing filter in the continuous domain. So this, this is a process of called uh, downsampling decimation. Now this is just one example. There are many other examples where you want to actually do this di uh, downsampling. So for example, I put IP telephony is one example. Let's say you are using some IP telephony system like Skype and the computer is recording my voice at a certain rate but the communications link between me and the other party is cannot support that rate. Maybe the rate that the computer is recording it uh, is 20 kilohertz and of course there is all the bits you can convert it into bits but the rate that the communication link can support is only let's say 15 kilohertz well you have to do downsampling to go to 15 kilohertz similarly sending continuous time signals over mobile messaging apps so if you use any messaging app then you know that those apps you are sending them over a cellular link you don't want to consume that much data so many of those mobile apps actually downsample your signal and then send it over okay there are many other uses of downsampling but we'll leave that for future discussion. Now, the question is, is downsampling the only thing we do in sampling rate conversion?
and the answer is no sometimes what happens is that instead of you reducing the rate you want to increase the rate so sometimes we actually want to increase the sampling rate now why would that be the case an example of that is suppose you have a hard piece of hardware that can only take input at a certain sampling frequency for example let's say you have a CD player in a car that only plays songs that are sampled at 44.1 kilohertz but you have a signal that has been sampled at 20 kilohertz well in that case what you want is first increase the sampling rate of your signal to 44.1 kilohertz so that you can play that song okay so again there are two ways so approach number one is if you want to increase the sampling rate approach number one is I take XN the same thing I first convert it into so let's say I have a song that has been sampled at 24 kilohertz okay I convert it into X hat T and then let's say I want to increase the sampling rate of this to 96 kilohertz because I have a device that can only play 96 kilohertz songs so I resample it at 96 thousand one over ninety six thousand sampling frequency uh, sampling time I get X tilde n which is equal to X hat of n t2 and if the reconstruction was pretty good then I know that that will be the same as X of n t2 and in this case since we are increasing the sampling rate there is no possibility of aliasing So that is approach one to increase the sampling rate. Approach two is that I take my input signal, I do some discrete operation and I get back the same result that I would have gotten using approach number one. Okay. So in this case what I need to input to the system is the ratio of the two sampling times which in this case is four. So <clears throat> the goal in this problem was I am given sampling frequency 24 kilohertz I need to actually go to new sampling frequency 96 kilohertz approach number one which is infeasible is that I reconstruct the signal and then I resample it in analog domain approach number two which is what sampling rate conversion is that I actually just input the ratio of the two things that I'm interested in so in this case the ratio is 4 and I do some discrete operations to get back a sequence that would have been the same that I would have gotten using approach 1 now in this is the problem where we call this whole thing will be called interpolation by a factor of 4 and some people will use the term upsampling although when we do the next set of videos we'll look at the distinction between upsampling and interpolation so in our world 
upsampling and interpolation are not going to be the same thing. They will be related, but there will be a slight difference. So that's basically the essence of sampling rate conversion and why we need to do that. In many applications, you either want to decrease the sampling rate or incre increase the sampling rate due to various reasons, hardware constraints, communication constraints, or some other reasons. And you don't want to actually do that using analog hardware. So how do you do that in the discrete domain? That's called sampling rate conversion. That will be the topic that we'll be discussing in next videos.